everything I am because you love me. For all the times you stood by me, for all the truth that you made me see, for all the joy you brought to my life, for all the wrong that you made right, and for every dream you made me see, for all the love I found in you, I'll be forever thankful, Sai. You're the one who held me up, never let me fall. You're the one who saw me through it all. You gave me wings and made me fly. You touched my hand and I touched the sky. You stood by me and I stood tall. I have your love. I had it all. I'm grateful for each day you gave me. Maybe I don't know that much, but I know this much is true. I was blessed because I was loved by you. Om Shri Sai Ram, uh, a warm welcome to all my brothers and sisters and everyone in the Sai family. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for having me today to speak to you all. And uh, I, think, I think, you know, when I look back, the only reason I'm sitting here before you is because I had the privilege of having spent some time with Swami. Swami gave me the privilege of having spent uh, have taken me with him and spent, uh, you know, given us the opportunity of being with him. And there are, I, I think the way I'd want to structure this is, uh, you know, there, when we lived with Swami, Swami gave us some really wonderful experiences. And with each experience, there was a message. With each experience, there was a learning. And, it, and I just like to relate some of these experiences as we go through and what my learnings and what my uh, what the message to me was i'm sure the messages could mean different things to different people but i think it's just important to go through some of it as as i would uh, say basically they were his messages and again another single another key point is that you know when we lived with him and we we went through these experiences it was perfectly like Krishna with the Gopikas. I, you know, I remember those uh, those stories about Krishna and Gopis and how the Gopikas would lose their body consciousness and would just be lost in Krishna and would not see anything except Krishna and everything they did. I think that was exactly the same feeling with the boys and Swami. So it was reliving Krishna and Gopikas here. There was Swami and the students. And those experiences were absolutely priceless. So the theme is the Sai Krishna with his Gopikas. And we were fortunate, very, very, very fortunate to have gone through some of these experiences. And, you know, the way I kind of calibrate my life or is there's before Christ and after Christ. But for me, it was before Sai and after Sai. Because after Sai, your world was changed. And he went, made, made you go through these changes. And he changed your life and he changed your world completely. And uh, 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 you know what? What he did was he he took you, and there was rust and dust on you all over you, and he cleaned you up in a significant way, so that you could then experience him in a much better way. Uh, I'll the, you know everybody has a point where they come to Swami, and that entire coming to Swami is a is an experience everyone has to talk about when they get a chance to talk to devotees. So I did not believe in Swami initially. I kind of said, okay, he's a good man, he's doing good work, but I have my life, I value my life, and it's a, it's a worldly life, and I don't want to have anything to engage with a uh, person who into religion and all these things. But I didn't, little did I realize that, one, there was no religion in it. It was all spirituality. It was all love. And the second thing is he brought me to him and, uh, and started, uh, and, and he actually told me, in Brindavan, this was 3rd of November, 19, 
1988 where uh, he called me and I didn't want to come and sit in front of him and he called and he made me sit and he said uh, we we are the he, he spoke to me for one hour 15 minutes my family everybody was there he made me sit on a chair opposite him where everyone was sitting on the floor and uh, he asked what are your plans so i said i'm planning to go to the us to do an mba i'm just finishing my engineering and then uh, he went through a very rational a worldly rational explanation of why the us mba may not be completely applicable so i said okay logical i'll do an iim or a bajaj or a sidnam then he again logically explained why uh, you know swami's college is better in many ways and whatever and after going through a 1 hour 15 minute completely rational explanation of why uh, i should come to his college uh, then after any any obviously leaked a few things of his omnipresence and omniscience in those in that in that uh, discussion the last line of this of, of his of that discussion was what really melted he said you have hundreds of friends you have a blue diary with hundreds of friends names and numbers written at the back of it you spend so much time with them uh thoda time swami ke sath bhi spend kar sakta hai so that i i can't forget those words of his exact words and that's when you melted and everybody was happy and i was kind of a little bit of a prodigal son in the family where i rebelled with the ways of the world and then that was when you slowly start getting in there were a lot of miracles and a lot of things that happened in the run up to joining uh, parthi where i kept thinking no i'm going to change my mind i'm going to go back and talk to swami and say uh, i've changed my mind but you know when he has decided to bring you to him uh, all the forces of the world unite and he that doesn't change at all okay uh, again as i as i joined swami's college now remember this was uh, June 89 and as i joined the college for the first four or five months i did not i did not have that blind faith or belief and i kept questioning why are why is swami doing this why are the boys doing this why are the teachers doing this and i kept asking these questions just in a pure analytical way looking for a rational to say i don't think some things are right and uh, swami let me go through those questions i'd like i'd kind of say there are thousands of boys and thousands of people wasting their time in the darshan place wasting their time they're not doing anything why are they wasting their time but i didn't realize that that was not a waste of time a little I, it, kind of you had to wait for the rust and dust to clear up and then swami takes you but at one point he took you in and i went through a couple of experiences which i'd like i'd like to share this point so you know there was there, there was a point where uh, i felt sick i had uh, insect bites on my feet both my feet were infected with insect bites there was pus coming out continuously and somehow the doctors were not working and nothing was happening and this went on for 4 or 5 days to a point that i could not stand i could not walk i found it difficult going to the toilet it was it was a very painful experience and uh, then i reached a point where one evening i'm sitting in my room in the parthi hostel it's about 6 pm and remember 6 pm bhajans would start in parthi it's about 6 pm and i said i'm done this entire thing is not true they say swami has the love of a thousand mothers it's not true i don't believe this i'm sitting here crying in pain and i i was in pain, a lot of pain and i'm crying in pain and there baba sitting on his grand chair doing bhajans not caring about me this love of thousand mothers is not true is if my mother was here she would have arranged one doctor to come and see me and i'd have been fine and he's sitting there not doing anything at exactly the same time i was told swami gets up from the bhajan chair walks down and asks where is my boy bombay boy who has come new boy so there was all kinds of uh, hustling bustling so no, then one they finally figure they call the warden the warden says swami is not well then swami calls dr alreja and he calls a second doctor then he calls his driver and then he tells the two doctors i want both of you to go to the hostel now don't wait for bhajans to get over don't wait i want and he tells swami sends his own car 
with the two doctors and he says go now my boy is very sick i want you to see him take your medicines and go then he again walks around and he and i was told all this later because i was in the hostel at that time in pain and then uh, bhajan was still going on bhajan would get over at 6:30 the boys would come back by quarter to 7 7 and uh, at 6:15 we have i you see swami's car coming in you see two doctors uh, in the car and they came and called me and the we everybody came and said oh, no uh, the two doctors have come for you and then the doctors came and they you know alreja was a was quite old he was an older doctor and he says i told swami why are you sending two doctors only one doctors in our why do you need a boy you see how old i am i can't walk properly and you're forcing me to come running with two doctors to see one boy he didn't realize what swami's plan was and then they clean my feet put the medicines did everything and made me then the next thing i saw was the vice chancellor came the registrar of exams came the controller uh, the registrar came the controller of exams came the whole senior staff or swami was told instructed by swami my boy is not well you have to go see him before anyone had come there were like eight or 10 the entire administration was there and that's when you kind of realized my god what a what a what a uh, you know my that feeling of swami is not doesn't have the love of thousand mothers see what he's did and uh, he he worked to that then that night there was a very uh, you know i was i was laying down my bed sleeping and uh, thinking about the events of what happened that day and a really big mosquito came and bit me in the eye some insect i don't know what it was and the next i somehow i just went to sleep they had given you medicines and whatever painkillers and everything so i went to sleep next morning i got up my eye was like a big golf ball and it was just one slit open and a big golf ball so i was kind of saying you know i better go to the doctor anyway the doctors had asked me to come to see them so i went to the doctors and i went to the eye doctor and this lady doctor was there and she looks at me in the eye and then she starts putting some ointment she asks what happened she says do one thing please go and sit in the front and tell swami also i said okay and she didn't say tell me anything she gave me some medicines put some ointment and i went and sat in the front that evening i am sitting in the darshan right in front with a eye that's swollen like this and bandages on my feet and swami walks out of the interview room walks straight up to me and doesn't say a word he's just staring at me for almost 2 minutes and i'm staring at him i'm looking up at him and he's looking down at me and i sat like this for 2 minutes and then he asked me how are you i forgot to tell swami swami my eye is not well my feet are hurting i forgot to say anything and then uh he looked at i said swami i'm fine and he turned and he walked away he there was no more words exchanged nothing exchanged he says how are you he went back and then he did his thing i went back to the hostel i went and saw my eye was looking better it had the swelling had gone down so i said okay the medicines must be working and the doctor had told me come back tomorrow morning so i went back the next morning to the doctor and she was say yeah, where are you where are you i'm waiting for you why have you not come so no no i can't. so i went to the and i asked her she went inspected my eye looked at everything and uh, she says thank god sai ram so i said what do you mean he says uh, i did not tell you yesterday he saved you you had lost your eye he gave you back your eye sai yesterday by just looking at you and that was a starting point for uh, welcome to parthi and welcome to sai's experiences and it kind of slowly seeped into me my god what you know look look at what uh, look, look at the his power and look at his love and look at his care all those feelings totally started coming back to you and uh, you know I'll, i'll tell you with swami the one message i always took is there's a point where he wants to bring change in you and swami is a master strategist a master strategist he will reach make you reach a point of disequilibrium brim or a point of break point and then he brings change in you so the same thing uh, when you, when you're happy when you're in equilibrium when everything's fine bringing change in people is very difficult and swami would take you to the edge and then he would bring change in you and that's 
exactly what uh, he did. And kind of when I look back, when I look at the current times today, and I can see there's a lot of problems in the world. The whole world is in this equilibrium. It's probably a message from Swami that he wants to bring a change in us, not just one of us, but the whole world. And that's probably one of the things I take away. Uh, on aside to this, you know, Dr. Alreja, who's no more, who had come to see me at that point, uh, uh, he, I remember him telling the story that uh, he would tell Swami, Swami, uh, I'm so old, you're driving me crazy, you know, like continuously running here, running there, giving medicines. I don't even know what medicines I'm giving. And then uh, Swami told him, Deko Alreja, tum apna kaam karo, hum apna kaam karega. Means you do your work, I'll do my work. You give the medicines, I'll do the curing. You don't need to worry what medicines you're giving or not. And again, that was an important message that what the curing is all in Swami's hands. The curing is entirely his. And, uh, and, and, and taking medicines and doing all these uh, mundane things is part of the world. But the real power is in Swami's hands in terms of doing whatever he's doing. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's that again, there, as you go through this evolution of, you know, trying to understand Swami more, trying to see Swami more, there was a small incident. Uh, my, I remember my father, who's no more, he passed away two years ago. He used to say, with a pure heart, Swami will always respond. God will always respond. And he had not spoken to me for maybe two, three weeks. And I was, again, new in the system. So I was kind of saying, okay, with a pure heart, I'm going to tell Swami, Swami, talk to me. And uh, he never responded. So one day I said, look, my heart ain't getting purer than what it is. So this is the best I can. And I sat down and I said, let me see what my father said is true or no. And Swami came out for darshan that evening. As he walks by, he walks past me. He walks past me and he doesn't say a word. And I look down and say, what my father said was untrue. And then suddenly someone's tapping me. And I see what happened. And then Swami turned back two steps. And he's asking me something. Tum dekha wo ho gaya, this, that, whatever. I said, Sai Ram. He waited for me. He waited for me to break to the point where he said, I'm giving you a message with a pure heart. I always, always, always listen. And that was an important message again, that even in today's time, you reach out to him with a pure heart. He's always going to listen to you. you. He's always there. Uh, during those 18 months, the residual 18 months of my two years, of an MBA, the first six months, I kind of uh, slowly learned or slowly tried to uh, get my disbeliefs out of the way. But the next 18 months, he was very benevolent, very gracious, very loving. He would, he would just shower us uh, with hundreds of opportunities, hundreds of opportunities. And some of the learnings over there, right? He would call us to the interview room and we'd just be talking about Krishna, about the Gopikas, about Rama, about Hanuman, all these, you know, really wonderful stories. And remember, when Swami talks of a story of Krishna or Rama, it is autobiographical. He will explain. He picked it up this way and lifted it and did this and did that as though Swami lifted it and he's explaining to you from his own life. And that autobiographical so all those stories and all those messages went deep into you. But then along with that, along with that, there was always this thing where he made sure that when you, when he entered a room, he'd switch on the electricity light switch. When he'd leave the room, he'd switch it off. And he'd look at, after he did that, he would look at, just to give you a message, remember, be uh, don't waste anything, never waste anything. You would keep repeating that. And I think that, again, is a very relevant, just those small messages would come, just those small messages would keep coming. I remember one day when, you know, he called us much before Darshan, four or five of us were inside the interview room, and we were just chatting with Swami. Swami would be talking to us about a lot of things. And then he says, wait, wait, now it's Darshan time. I'm going to go and give Darshan and come to the devotees. And he looked out of the window and there was a whole lot of devotees sitting there. So then uh, he went to give darshan to the devotees and he says, you wait here only. Now, you know, we'd been up for a while and we'd not had evening tiffin. So I, we were f 
five of us. So I said, listen, let's go to the kitchen and see what Tiffin is there. I'm a little hungry. So the boy said, no, 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 this Swami's room. <laughs> Swami's house is away. They'll be angry. I said, Baba, this is Swami's house. This is Swami's room. Swami's a mother. Won't you go to your mother's house and eat food if you're hungry? Are you going to wait for him to ask? Come, let's go. A little brave. And so I went to the kitchen. There were Swami had two, uh, 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 two cooks, Subhabhaya and uh, Vishnu Bhatt. So we asked them, what is there, what is there? And they, you know, would be very kind. So they gave us some vada, vada, this, that, and we ate it nicely. And then uh, cleaned our mouths, whatever, and waited. And then after 10, 15 minutes, Swami comes back. And then uh, he looks at all of us. Then he looks at me. He says, you ate the food. <laughs> Snack. And, I, and, you know, so I, for one second, I thought, okay, we're getting fired, right? He said, Dekoda, you ate food. Then he wait. Then he said, wait. Then he goes into then he goes into the kitchen himself. And he comes out. In one hand, there are five tumblers or water glasses. In the other hand, there's a jug. He says, You've eaten food. You've not had water. You must be thirsty. Have you had water? No, Swami. Okay, he pours water for each one of us in the glass, mix, gives us each one. We take the glass, we all have water, then we collect the glasses, put it back in the kitchen, and then he says, Puchundi, Beto, sit, 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 sit. Uh, it's, it's, you know, those, so, so I'm just saying Swami was really the divine mother, the loving mother who would care for every single need. And just understand that you've eaten food, you've not had water. And then he himself goes and gets it. He didn't call Vishnu Bhatt or Subhavaya and say, can you bring the water and can you bring the glasses and jack? He went and himself did it. That, and on the other side of this was the boy's love. The boy's love would flow and flow and flow and flow and just like the Gopikas. So I remember this uh, stories in uh, Brindavan, in Trai Brindavan, where, you know, Swami would come out and all the boys would be waiting. And then the Swami would give a signal with his eyes. He would turn his eyes this way means you can go in and everybody would run at full speed to try and get a seat next to his jhula. So there was a jhula, maybe two, three hundred boys and everyone would go and sit around the jhula. And in that running, remember in Vrindavan, Trai Vrindavan, which is Swami's residence in Bangalore and outside near Whitefield, there are a lot of pots with flowers and plants and whatever. And every day there'd be two or three pots breaking because the boys have run so fast. They didn't care for who got hurt, whose shirt is torn, whose pant got hurt, someone's bleeding. They ran with a complete loss in body consciousness, only wanting their Sai Krishna. And then this would, drama would go on every day. And then Swami spent an hour and a half with the boys talking about, uh, Sai, about a lot of different things. And then one day, one of the very senior devotees gets up and says, Boy, Swami, these boys are very indisciplined. He says, yeah, yeah, tell me what is the problem? <laughs> Why are these boys indisciplined? Swami, see, every day there are so many pots that are broken and every day we have to keep uh, changing them. And, you know, they get hurt and see this boy is bleeding and this guy's shirt is torn and that happened and this happened. And uh, then Swami looks at him and tells him, a big truth. He says, you will not realize the relationship between boys and me. It is, it is a relationship of the Gopikas yearning for the Krishna. They lose body consciousness and they can only think of Sai. And they can only think of the love of Sai. Nothing else matters to them. And they can only see me and I see them. And that is a love. It is an expression of love. There is no worldly element here. Totally. And that uh, was this thing. And it was the yearning of the Jivatma for the Paramatma, which was a very normal yearning in his context. So he said that the Jivatma will always yearn for the physical Paramatma who has come down on earth. It is very normal for that to happen. Having said that, after saying that, he looks at the boys and he tells the boys, Take boys, uh, please remember discipline is important. Don't do this. Don't that whatever but you know it was a fun way of telling the boys listen boys behave yourself don't be a little disciplined 
but I'm telling you, Swami enjoyed it. Swami loved that love, that yearning, that uh, and he would he would and he would reciprocate the same. And then there were times when he would uh, show his divine true divinity in some form or fashion where he, that he's not just a human being in five foot three in the form that uh, he presents himself. So uh, again, this was told to me by one of the boys over there that once Swami was walking on the giving darshan in Puttaparthi and when he gives darshan, sometimes he just stops his holding a rope to in the uh, lifting his feet his rope from going covering his feet and he's standing there and just holding his hand and is looking at devotees. So uh, one of those days when that's happening, uh, he stood there for two or three minutes just staring into, into air and holding uh, his rope two, three inches above his feet, just holding it up, his, his rope a little above his feet. And uh, he came back and he stood near the VIP corridor and then he asked one of the gentlemen there, uh, do you know why I was standing over there? Yes, Swami, you were giving darshan. Yes, Swami, you were whatever. There were various things that came up. And then Swami says, you are not the only beings yearning for this body and this Paramatma. The Sapta Rishis wanted to take Namaskar and I was giving them Namaskar over there. So one by one, the Sapta Rishis were giving, taking Namaskar and he gave you a little glimpse of that divinity and then he'd come back and, uh, and, and, and come back in the world and just start engaging with uh, you. There were a lot of stories again we heard where, you know, he's given, uh, you know, Mahavishnu Darshan to some devotee and he's given various glimpses. You know, there was one devotee where he appeared as a Hanuman in one devotee. You've heard of stories where he's appeared as Ganesha. We've heard a lot of these stories and I also said, you know, even I want to see, uh, even I want to see Krishna. So in my mind, and I would kind of, you know, sometimes write letters and whatever. But I said, look, you know, I'm just an ordinary fellow. These fellows are great souls. How will I get to see Krishna and Anuman? Then one day, uh, we were in the interview room. And then Swami lifts his robe up a couple of inches and says, take Namaskar. And I bow down to take Namaskar. And they were not Swami's feet. They were Krishna's feet, you know, in the format where Krishna holds his feet. They were not Swami's feet. They were Krishna's feet. I took Namaskar. Then he gives me a big smile like this. And I just realized what he'd done. It, it, took, me a, it took me a minute or two to digest what Swami had done. But there's small desires, small things. He would kind of uh, whisk past you and give you those glimpses of divinity. Uh, and at the same time, he would bring you to the world and give you some messages. So there was a story, there was a time when we were six, seven of us in the room with him. And he waves his hand and he creates such a big diamond. And I kid you not, it must be like three inches in diameter, the head of the diamond, at least. And it was huge. It was glistening. And then Swami spoke a whole story about that diamond and this and that. And then he... Uh, says, you know what, you boys, uh, if anyone gets this diamond, you sell the diamond, you get so many hundreds of crores. You don't need to work. You can relax and you can enjoy your life. and You don't need to work. So then he gets up from the chair huh? and all of us are standing. He wants to show us the diamond. So we were actually doing path seva and we were holding his feet. And so he gets up and we step, step back. Then he looks me in the eye, straight in the eye. And I'm about five, six feet from him. He says, do you want this diamond? So you, you can't say yes. You can't say no. He just smile. Because if you say yes, then Swami is going to, I don't know how he reacts. So you just smile. Then actually what Swami did was, he took his hand and he threw the diamond at me. And the diamond went about three, four feet in the air and disappeared. And I was, I had actually got my hand waiting for the diamond. And then he did this tamasha. He started laughing. He says, see, yearn for, yearn for the creator, not the creation. And he started laughing. And again, we sat down and continued. But I'm just saying these were small, 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 small things that he continuously put us through and got us to experience. Uh, 
they, you know, some of us have been fortunate to go to Kodai with him. And I'm going to give you a couple of stories from there, which are very, very memorable. You spend in Kodai, the format is he takes you with him in a bus or in the car or whatever. Uh, and then you go there, you either spend two, three days in OT and the rest of the day, and say, you, you usually go for a month, sometimes between 20 days to 30 days. And in our case, it was 30 days from 4th of April to 4th of May. Uh, uh, soon after college gets over the 1st of March. And I was at that point an outgoing student. A student was just graduated. So it's very rare for Swami to take students who are graduating already. But we were fortunate. And uh, so, so uh, there were a lot of incidents that happened in the run up to this Kodai trip. And Swami was very angry, very angry, and for no reason that I could understand. So I said, okay, look, I don't believe Swami is angry for a reason. So I would, I would just, okay. Then on the morning of the trip, uh, he, we were told, please keep your bags ready and be ready in Thrai Vrindavan, this Swami's house. And he will decide whether we go or we don't go. So after three, four days of continuously being bashed by Swami, we had no confidence in ourselves that you know, how Swami will react, he'll cancel the trip, this, that, and whatever. So suddenly we gathered there, and Swami was in a perfectly good mood. And uh, these moods are basically projections of what he wants to project. It's not Swami doesn't really have moods, he's way about that. But we say, we're sitting there, uh, standing there, and uh, he says, okay, we're going, we're going to leave in an hour, this, that, whatever, working out the arrangements. Then he looks around and he says, I need one mechanic. Is any of you a mechanic? Now, I used to fiddle around with cars, but I was nowhere near a mechanic. I didn't understand how to repair cars at all. I knew a little bit of how to repair cars. But Swami said, I want a mechanic. Uh, now, this, uh, this is the car that you see the image, ADA 9. This was the silver color car that Swami went on this trip. And I'm going to tell you a story about this car as well. So as we, as, as, as uh, when, when Swami said, uh, you know, everybody looked at me. I'm the mechanic. I'm the guy who, uh, uh, again, this, this is another image where I'm making where Swami wear the padukas, his uh, slippers, uh, before he goes down on a picnic with us. So the car is next to him and Swami comes out of the car and I'm bending down to give him the padukas. A lot of stories around these padukas that we had three sets of padukas and Swami fell in love with one of them. And then we were trying to get three padukas blessed. But uh, so there, there, there are, there's an interesting story around this. But anyway, he, he says, I want a mechanic. So everybody looks at me and I was dangerous to be a mechanic. But then Swami says, yes, uh, you come, you come in the car. So there were two cars, Swami's car, this ADA 9, and there was another red color car. So he says, you come in the red car and follow my car, uh, follow Swami's car. And then the rest of the boys went in the bus and uh, the mechanic, I was supposed to be the mechanic, went in this car. What he wanted to probably may get me to experience or something, something uh, which I still don't, you know, you, you still digest it with a lot of uh, awe and a lot of, uh, un, you know, you find it hard to believe. So along the way, you know, we, the Swami's car and the second car went, uh, through Bangalore city and was going to the uh, Uti, first went to Uti, to, going to Uti road. The bus went straight to Uti, uh, towards Uti road and the bus and the cars met at some point along the way. Then uh, you know, at one point we had got up at four in the morning, little tired. So I was slept in the car in the back seat and then Swami's car at one point overtake us. And again, we overtook Swami's car because we had to fill petrol and stuff. And then Swami, when he comes, when, when I come out of the car to, Swami's car with folded hands. He says, Kya, you're going with God in the car and you're sleeping. <laughs> but <laughs> those were the jokes he cracked. Anyway, along the way, at the somewhere uh, close to the foothills of Uti, uh, Radha Krishna was driving Swami's car, came and told me the car is giving problems. Uh, the fuel is, the car is jerking. It's not working properly. So I came out of the car and uh, both of us were trying to check what was wrong and we figured the petrol is not going to the engine. Now, this was a big eight-cylinder car, German car. And we, and believe me, I knew nothing about it to really be able to help, except that figure that the petrol is not going properly to the engine. Probably there's dirt in the fuel injection system. And uh, 
so this went and then i told radha krishna radha krishna why don't you take swami in the car which i am sitting i'll go in the bus and we tried that for a while and everything had to get approved by swami but uh, ultimately we tried that for a while then after almost half an hour of going to and fro at the foothills of uti radha krishna comes and tells me uh, i am taking swami and going swami in, in which is in the same silver car the photo you saw you swami wants your car to come with the bus the uti hills are very curvy and very uh, uh, and it's late in the evening swami wants your car to be with the bus the car in which you want to come with the bus and he i'm taking swami and going so i said i cannot allow you to take swami and go uh, when the car is not working what happens if the car breaks down what happens if it doesn't work what happens if you're alone you're alone with swami i'm not going to allow that he says these are swami's instructions please follow <laughs> so once it's swami's instruction there's no debate you say okay yes and then he sat in the car and he drove off fast radha krishna he was a wonderful wonderful human being and uh, we came with the car we came, the, the bus and the car came slowly together through the ghats uti ghats we reached the gate of uti and swami was there near the entrance waiting for us and then swami looks at me in the eye and says see the power of faith huh? he, he stares at me and says see the power of faith and then he i i didn't understand what had happened at that point and then we went in and we washed up and then again he said but what had actually happened that day was there was no petrol going to the engine of the car as we had figured and then radha krishna put his hand on the steering wheel said sairam 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 as so as long as he said sairam the car worked the minute he stopped saying sairam the car stopped and he kept saying sairam 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 for 60 70 kilometers through the whole driving a, not a drop of petrol went into the car engine and the car went on its own <laughs> just using the word sairam so so what swami told me is see the faith of radha krishna that just using the word sairam 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 he has brought me to uti see the power of faith now that kind of hit you at that point you didn't understand and after that the car didn't work for 10 12 days the fuel injector came from some spare supplies and got repaired the car got repaired for 12 days from that car didn't work after and what swami said was when he reached the porch of the uti house he did not have to turn the car off he just stopped saying sairam and the car stopped and didn't start again <laughs> that was a, so i'm just saying so i'll i'll request i'll request uh, brother to put that photo up again of the ada 9 car just to now you have context of the whole story of of this is the car this is the car that actually drove that radha krishna drove holding the steering wheel and saying sairam sairam and the car drove for 70 kilometers without a pet drop of petrol reaching the engine okay now on this side i'll tell you radha krishna had a very 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 uh, we can take the photo of a very special relationship with swami and somehow they were like two atmas that was perfectly tuned i'll give you a small example swami, swami was deeply deeply uh what i say you know that 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 equation was very solid so once swami comes out of the dining hall in kodai and he had a rice a grain of rice and there were some vip sitting outside now this is embarrassing to have a grain of rice over here radha krishna runs with a hanky to swami and doesn't say a word this is look at each other in the eyes swami does this and gives the hanky back Swami knew he was saying that food is on your lips and he knew that Swami would understand that frequency that tuning of being in one with God and God hearing you 24/7 I mean that would that would be something for all of us to attain and all of us to uh, get to so I think that's another another message that the faith and the tuning with God especially at a time like this is super super important now kodai was i'll tell you the format of kodai he takes 30 boys with him and we stay just outside swami's room or there are a couple of other rooms on the side as well and we all live there we get up early in the morning have a bath 
we have breakfast with him, we have a session after that, then we go for a walk while he gives darshan, then we have lunch with him, again we, uh, uh, we rest for a while, then evening, afternoon we have different at 3.34, then we again have a session with him, there's public bhajans, you have dinner, there's a, there are a lot of chats in between, and it's like how you live in your own house with your mother and father, it was exactly that. So, uh, the, you know, th those experiences, those beautiful experiences you experience in Kodai, there'd be discussion on a lot of different topics, a lot of different topics. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of small experiences from uh, Kodai, right? So, uh, I, I, I felt a little sick. I got fever when I was in Kodai. And uh, Swami, you know, when the list of boys was being made for Kodai, one of the discussions was, okay, who do we take, who do we not take? Now, Swami had put my name on the list, but someone felt that, Swami, this boy has fallen sick. In the past, we fall sick, we'll have a problem. So Swami said, don't worry. If he falls sick, we'll call his uncle or parents or someone and tell him to take them away. So there's no problem. So somehow Swami insisted, but the point was, if he falls sick, we'll take him, we'll have him taken away. Now that was in my mind and I got up and I had fever, a high, high fever. If I told anyone, it would go to the teachers, I'd be sent back. If I told Swami, I'd be in a problem, I'd send back. So I didn't tell anyone. I took some vibhuti, put vibhuti and I said, Sairam, Sairam, Sairam and I just sat. And we sat for breakfast. Now, Swami eats his breakfast off in like two minutes and then in front of Swami's table is a table where the teachers and the VIP sit. So it's a four-seater table on the left onward the boys sit. So I went and sat on the left hand side where the boys were sitting and I took my food. Swami finished his breakfast in like two minutes and comes and stands at the table where the teachers are sitting and he says, you know what? Dogs are better than our boys. So, and he repeated that, you know what? Dogs are better than our boys. Now everyone got scared. My God, you know, Swami's going to fire us. Swami's going to uh, give us a really hard time. And uh, this is going to be a difficult time. Then Swami explains in a very loving lay, way. When dogs have fever, they starve. They don't eat anything. And when they don't eat anything, then automatically the body fights the fever and the, boys become, the dog becomes okay. His health becomes okay. The fever goes away. But he said, when our boys have fever, they have 4-4 four, four idlis. Yeah, for, this is the photo of Kodai where Swami is standing on the banister in the living room or the very memorable, very memorable because he'd stand here many times and talk and tell us stories and beautiful memories of this place. So he said, when our boys have fever, they eat four, four idlis and dosas at that time. And when dogs have fever, the dogs uh, don't eat anything and starve themselves and the fever goes away. Now that was a huge message give the body the space to fight the disease. God has designed the body to fight disease. Give the body, the, don't, don't tax the body with so many problems of digesting the food. Let, and I think again, this, this, this is an important message in today's world, that when there is a problem, let us give, let the body fight the disease. Say Sairam. And I'll tell you what, I, so that, what happened after that was I got the message, it hit me hard. And Swami looked at me with a twinkle of an eye from the side but didn't look at me straight head on. And uh, I got the message loud and clear. I skipped lunch. When lunch, when lunch was happening, I went and started serving. So there would be no pressure for me to sit and eat. Because if you don't eat, Swami is going to say, why are you not eating? Are you unwell? This, that, and I'd be sent back. So I said, I'm not taking a risk of not eating. So I'm going to serve. Same thing, uh, evening tiffin. Again, I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't eat. I just stood and I served. And... Uh, by evening I was okay, the fever had gone. But that message of Swami that dogs are better than boys is, is, is again a huge thing. Another time what happens, we're sitting with Swami and Swami's chair is here and I'm sitting right below him. And Swami would crack all kinds of jokes and put people in different spots. So he looks at me and he says, can you sing? Now if you ask any of the old boys, if you ask any of the old boys how good uh, uh, this photo is when we went to take photos at a beautiful picnic spot. And I clicked this from a 30-year-old video. Uh, very memorable. I'm, I'm actually going to put these videos up on YouTube so everyone can enjoy. We just retrieved them from tape. But uh, Tommy looks at me down. I'm, I'm sitting and he looks at me down and he says, can you sing? 
so i said uh, swami no swami whatever you know i can follow he says no no sing so i said swami you know i didn't have talam i didn't have ragam i didn't have a voice all three i was probably the worst in fact when i would sing everybody would either close their ears or pretend <laughs> pretend to uh, not hear because i was so bad in singing and then when swami said can you sing everyone started laughing swami said sing sing no swami no no sing sing everyone would keep laughing every time swami says sing then he looked at me and he says dekho sing boys you don't laugh okay even i'll not laugh okay i said no swami boys don't laugh i'm telling you and he's himself saying even i won't laugh sing so i sang two lines before i finished my first line everyone burst into laughter and swami also burst into laughter then you know i was sitting on the side so he just rubbed my head like this on the side and he said something very 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 important and i think that was the message i'm trying to give you is that he said everyone is not blessed or with the ability or the talent to sing so i think there are two messages one for those who he blessed with the talent and it is his grace it is not your grace and all your talents and all your abilities and all your intellectual faculties are all his grace don't sit on an ego i am the hero i am a really smart guy i am a beautiful singer i am a beautiful musician nothing everything is his grace and he said it that day in a very in a very jovial way he made everyone laugh he was laughing everyone was laughing and he he, he tells us the he tells us uh, that 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 uh, story now you know there were times in this kodai trip where he would come on a picnic i showed you that photo where uh, we took on a picnic and remember you know what happened at that time was when we entered that space that location there were no clouds in the sky suddenly all the clouds started coming in so obviously the gods cloud gods also decided sky gods decided parmatma has come down on earth let us also take darshan with the boys and so the clouds also came but uh, so we we go in the bus now i'm going to request my brother to put the photo up in the bus the swami would sit with us now this is him sitting on the with the curtain of the bus drawn up a little bit and he's sitting and he talked to us and this was almost a 30 40 minutes journey and then you know swami's car would go in front of us and swami's car would go to in front of us people didn't know that swami is sitting in the bus and the car is empty and swami there's no swami in the car and everyone is praying to the car continuously and everyone so swami would look at the look at uh, the car and doing namaskar to the car when he's actually sitting in the bus and everyone's ignoring the bus and then swami said some very important words at that point he says dekho uh, you have all your value by association with god you yourselves are zero god is one because of the zero, one the zero has value and you and and look at the car the car is is getting all the value because of swami's association with it and uh, just understand the value so that was a huge message for us for us, for for boys again you know there in the trip swami would do a lot of creations he created uh, he created a ring of rama at one point then one point he created uh, the churamani necklace which sita gave hanuman at the point of coronation so they finished 14 years of vanvas now this is the photo if you can see that pearl necklace that swami is wearing around his neck swami created that now two important points here so swami told us the story of how sita created the neck he first gave us a whole half an hour story on how what happened to that necklace so sita removed her necklace and gave it to hanuman hanuman said anything any material object to have value to me has to resonate the word rama 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 if it does not resonate the word rama rama it has no value to me so he take each pearl from the necklace put it to his ear if it does not resonate the word rama 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 he would bite that pearl and throw it away and put the next pearl to his ear so when swami showed us the necklace he showed us it had the tooth marks of hanuman on it and swami had recreated it now that 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 uh, entire uh, tooth marks on then then this was i think the second last day we went party in in kodai and it was in a wonderful mood so we told swami swami wear the necklace 
Swami was very reluctant. Somehow we said, Swami, you have to wear the necklace. So Swami wore the necklace. And you know, he's one of us playing with us, joking with us. So he wore the necklace and we took photos with it. What happened next as a side was a little interesting where uh, everybody went for dinner and Swami left that necklace next to his chair in a small basket. And, uh, and Swami went for dinner. And now that was the second last day. So a lot of VIPs had come and the room was full and they were serving. You know, so a few boys obviously went in. We were about six or eight boys outside said, okay, let's wait outside. Let's give them have the dinner. And then I picked up the necklace. I said, wow, Swami's left the see this, that. And then I said, okay, let's wear it. And again, the whole thesis is, Swami is our mother. We can always do what we want. It's our mother's necklace. So I put it on my neck and I wore it. And I was afraid, but I did. And we took photos. I took photos as well. And then after a few minutes, we put it back. Immediately after putting back, Swami comes out of the dining room, looks at me, looks at the necklace, says, oh, I forgot it. Or I left it here. He picks it up. And then he says, uh, did you wear it? Now, I had to say yes. So I said, yes, Swami. I thought he's going to finish me at that point <laughs> or whatever. He smiled and he did this and the necklace had disappeared. I'm just saying you that that was Swami was Swami was just full of love, full of grace, full of all those uh, beautiful uh, feelings of love that Swami had. Now, you know, this trip went beautifully. We came back to Kodai. In Kodai, I saw we came back to Brindavan, to Bangalore. And we're sitting in Bangalore and we're sitting around Swami. And Swami uh, asked us, how's the trip? Oh, wonderful, Swami. It was beautiful. This was a photo we took after the trip. Swami, this is a wonderful trip. Everything went well. We had, you know, such good experiences, this, that, whatever. Then Swami said, wonderful. You know why the trip was good? So all of us are saying, Swami, because you took us, Swami, everything was good, food was good, this was good, arrangements were good. He says, because the most important thing, the because of what happened for the three days, the three days before the trip, Swami fired us, fired us so badly. You know, I can't, I, it's hard to explain how exactly bad, badly he was upset with us and fired us. He says, because of those treatment I gave you before the trip, the trip went well. And again, the message, the message is that, uh, you know, uh, it, we are living in duality. We are living in Dwaita. With good comes bad. So there are times Swami gives us very, very difficult times. I'm telling you that time he gave us, he said all kinds of things. You should, you don't deserve to live. Your human life is a waste. You don't. He says, because of that treatment I gave you before the trip, the trip went well. Now, if I fast forward that message to today. And I say, my God, the world is going through a very difficult time. The world is, the point is we are living in duality. He has to give us these negative experiences to raise our consciousness. Concurrent to a good that will follow a good time that was for. And we're living in duality. And it is, it is, it, it is part of his creation. Uh, you know, then two years over, you go back and, 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 you know, uh, there's a, it's a very difficult parting to leave Swami, but when his instructions are to leave, you have to leave. Now, the point was, you know, there were assurances that you asked for when you left. So he kept, you know, I was very upset. I didn't eat food for two days at that time. And then Swami called me and said, Deko, you go, you come back. I am in you, with you, around you, everything. Come back. So I said, that is your responsibility. And somehow it just came out of me. And I'm telling you, 1991, June 10th, I've left Parthi. And I have gone back to Parthi till Swami was in his body 200 times. Now living in a world with a job, with a high pressure work, and he brought you back 200 times, uh, which is 10 times a year, over 20 years. Is not a joke. This is, I'm saying the power of word. I remember him saying that 20,000 horses cannot bring you to Parthi unless I will it. And then he says, I will bring you back. And he brings you back 200 times. Now that is all his grace. 
All I'm saying is the power of his word, the power of his will, the power of his can do absolutely anything. Now, I, re I remember, I remember, I'll, I'll give you a couple of other stories which happened. So this happened in 2006. I felt really sick. I felt uh, very sick when this, I was living in Singapore. And I was on a trip to Pakistan. And uh, there I had pain in the chest. I was wheelchaired into Bombay from Karachi. And uh, I came back. We saw a lot of doctors. There was liquids in the chest. Uh, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't eat. It was a very, very difficult time. And then I was a little better. The doctors in their diagnosis writes, the cause of the diseases is a mystery. I still have that. The famous, uh, this uh, Zari Ruta was the doctor at that point. Now they said, look, we can't do anything. Go back to Singapore. So I went back to Singapore. I tried to live a life. I could work only two, three hours in a day. I'd go to office, for, let's say nine, by 12, 12, 30, I'm so tired. I can't sit. I have to come back and sleep for six hours to recover to have dinner. And this continued to go on. This went on two months. I couldn't work. And then I hit a break point. I said, Swami, is this the end of my working life? Is this the end of my... Uh, and I was not even 40, I think. So I said, my God, this is the end of my life. And I, I, I just was very upset. And then, interestingly, or, oh, my, my younger brother's Went for, he lives in California. He went to uh, Brindavan to Swami for, to, to pray to Swami to name his kids. My parents, my brother, elder brother, everybody had gone. And they were all there. And I said, look, I can't sit. I can't. How can I come? You know, I mean, I won't be able to come. And uh, so he said, okay. So everybody went and we were still in Singapore. Then that evening, one evening, one morning, Swami was told, Swami, the family has come for your blessings. Swami said, and I'm giving you the exact words, I will see the full family tomorrow. Now, in the full family only, we were missing four of us, my wife, myself, and the two children. So we said, okay, it's Swami's message, come. So at that night, there was 1 a.m., there was a flight. We got on a flight at 1 a.m., landed in Bangalore at 3 a.m. I remember I couldn't sit for two hours without getting tired. Somehow went to Bangalore, slept for a few hours, went in the morning to Brindavan, went and sat over there. And Swami that day did not come down from the stage. Uh, he, he was up on the stage. I said, we sat in those front enclosure and I was sitting and I could feel energy entering me. I could feel Swami's vibrations entering me. And uh, just, he just sat for 20, 25, 30 minutes on the stage. You could feel that energy entering you. And then Swami took Aarti and went away, went back inside. And he didn't call anyone inside. It was 2007, January, if I'm not mistaken. So I said, my God. Then we went back to the city. And I said, OK, where are we going for breakfast? What are we doing here? Let's do this. Let's do that. I didn't realize I was OK. I had become OK. And then a message was sent to Swami. Swami, the full family has come. Even Jitendra has come from Singapore. Swami says, I know, these are his exact words, I know, I have already seen him. Right now, that was the message of Swami, that I have already seen him means I have cured him. And he's okay. And I became okay. And from that day onwards, there was, he, had, he had taken the disease away, a disease which the doctors had said that, uh, uh, you know, the cause, the cause is a mystery. We don't know how to cure it. We don't know how to work it out. And... I was up back to my 14, 16 hour days. Everything was working normal. Everything was, thing. but I'm saying the, the, the message again, I think I'm, the key thing here is what is the message of Swami in this whole thing? You know, I used to think that the results of all our actions are God's grace. Then I said, not only the results, but the action themselves are God's grace. So the actions are God's grace. The results are God's grace in his will. But when I, when I reached out to him and saying, give me the energy to work again, I realized the energy to do what you want to do, the actions themselves and the results, all three are his grace. Nothing is in your hands. I think these experiences, at least to me, it was a huge message that nothing, nothing is in your hands. He gave you the energy to do it. He made you do it. And the results are his grace. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to go to a small incident in uh, Parthi that happened. Uh, 
again, some I think it was 1990, where three, four of us, uh, five of us were sitting inside Swami's uh, room doing path seva and chatting with him. And then suddenly he looks at me and he says, uh, go call the warden. <clears throat> so I said, okay, Swami. I went out and I called the warden in. And he calls the warden and when he talks about it, he says, warden, yen samacharam, what news? Swami says, all is, he says, all is well. No, no, tell me what news, what news? All is well. No, no, you wanted to tell me something. You wrote some letters to me. Tell me what news? No, Swami, all is well. Everything is well. Uh, so he continued. Then he's saying, no, you had written something about this boy. So he had written something about me. It was a complaint against me. So he says, no, no, you wrote a complaint against him. Tell me what? No, Swami, nothing, nothing, nothing. Then uh, he got, then, then, then he said, he told the warden, see warden, these boys love me intensely. Okay. They have not, not, not done anything wrong. I don't want to see such complaints from my boys. Okay. And then he told us boys, boys, see, I understand. And he looked at me and he said, I understand what is in your heart. I understand your feelings for me. I understand. But the world also has to be uh, respected and understood. And, 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 you know, you have to express those feelings there also. So he, the point he made was, and the message for me was, if, you love him intensely. Believe me, there is no greater sadhana than that. You don't need to know all the scriptures. You don't need to know, know Ramayana, Mahabharata. You don't need to know all the Vedas, nothing. All you need to do is love him with all your heart. And then everything is greater than taken, taken care of. And a simple, pure heart. That's all he wants, wants from you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through one point where he... You know, when I was working in Bay, and one day I get a call from Parthi saying that, oh, you have sent Swami a message that you're coming to Parthi uh, on Sunday. Is, are you coming or not? So I said, I've never sent any message to Swami. I'm coming on Sunday, but I really want to go there because it was Christmas the next day. So I said, I really want to go. And uh, But, you know, I just went a month ago for my convocation. I don't have leave. I can, how can I go? So when I got that message, I said, okay. Let's go, right? Let's go to Parthi. And again, there were a lot of miracles where there was an airline strike and somehow some person came and gave me a ticket in my hand saying, go get on the flight. So I got on the flight. I went to Parthi and I reached on Christmas morning. It was Sunday. It was day of the sun of God. And I reached there. Swami normally finishes silver door darshan and goes away by 7. I reached at 7.30 or 7.40. That day when I reached, I saw Swami's gone away. I was quite upset. As soon as I reached, after that, there was a hustle. Swami comes out again. And he looks at me. Ah, I, 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 you came, you came. I said, yes, Swami. And then that was it. Then that evening, he talks to me for a minute. He says, how are you? This, that, everything. Then he utters some very important words. He says, wait, wait. Next, I will see. Okay. This was Christmas. Next, I will see. He didn't say anything. For next five days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, I'm trying to get his attention. I'm trying to give him letters. Swami, I have a job in Bombay, this, that. I called up my office in Bombay. They told me, you've lost your job. Your job is gone. Your boss has fired you. I said, what do I call my boss and tell him that I'm coming back, not coming back? I don't know. Swami's not giving instructions. Swami said, wait, wait. Next, I will see. So I have to wait. Anyway, this went on. And then I just gave up. And I would just sit and enjoy the bhajan and the darshan. And he was not talking to me. He was not even looking at me. I said, I have to wait. These are Swami's instructions. I can't violate that. Then one day, after about 20 days, after a sports meet, after everything, he looks at me. I'm sitting in the corner in the front. Ari, you're sitting here. How long is your vacation? I said, Swami, no vacation to office, Swami. Uh, okay, okay, go in, go in. So he calls me in <coughs> to the interview room. And then he says, uh, you know, I was just testing you. I just wanted to, I was just testing you if you would wait. And uh, you don't know what is happening. Everyone in Bombay and Bangalore and here and there is worried. They think you're a very bad boy. They think you've done something completely wrong. They thought the whole world said, Swami's not looking at you. Swami's not talking to you. And you're sitting over there. You've lost your job. There's something, you're a complete loser. Then he said, I was just testing you. Then he calls me inside the inner room, talks very lovingly, does a lot, lot, of, lot of nice time. 
then i come i come out take namaskar i said what should i do swami he says go back so i said what should i go back and do he says go and do your job so i said which job swami he says same job i said okay same job so then you know with swami you just you just follow instructions you don't think you don't use your head you just went so next morning i went came back to bombay i went to the office next morning and the security tells me please wait outside the you you don't longer work in this company please wait outside so the i'm waiting outside then the boss comes and in a rough say why why have you come so i said you know i've come to work this is what happened i'm sorry sir so i kept repeating i'm sorry it's my mistake i can't explain to you there was a personal challenge i can't explain it's a personal challenge but the interesting part was that the previous day we were two colleagues which was running a particular division in the company the previous day my that colleague had resigned so if he had fired me as well there was no one in the division the division would be empty so he had no choice when i kept asking for apology for forgiveness he said okay come back i will cut your pay for 3 weeks or whatever i said yes no problem and i was back to work but i'm saying swami tests you in this world and he he makes you go through a lot of experiences but you have to you have to stick with it with faith now i'm i'm i'll come to a couple of things right now the, you know there are a lot of things when swami left his body 24th april 1991 it was an extremely difficult time for everybody all of us right all there would be all students the whole world but at least the way i and, and you know it took me a year to reconcile with that so again i'm not trying to say that uh, it was easy or it was whatever but my my thinking was it was first we lived with him now he lives with us he came and sat in our hearts and he is with us 24/7 i i can say that with confidence today that we have to feel him his presence in everything we we'll do we do and he will definitely respond i'll relate a small incident that happened in kurdai exactly on the same topic so one day you know swami was talking we were talking in the morning after breakfast about science and technology and professor sampath who was the vice chancellor is a real guru on technology and defense and all those things and radio waves and all so after the discussion got over professor sampat called me because i was asking swami questions on this and he professor sampat called me on the side and he said see the radio waves and the waves are all the time in the air it is for the tuning to happen in this and that and swami was standing there and remember when swami is there you can't have side conversations but sampath was a pure hearted simple man who did not and he was talking pulling me and i can't disrespect the vice chancellor when he's trying to talk to you and then swami tried to come and you know swami was it kind of he, he kind of made it feel that he's been left out of the conversation so swami came and joined the conversation became a three way conversation but that day swami said remember the waves and the tuning radio waves are like divinity they are there all the time in the air and you just need to tune in and it is there for you that tuning needs purity needs love needs faith and he will respond and he will you so it the waves swami's grace is all the time and his waves are all the time his messages for you are all the time there and and he has taken care of all of us so my my thinking is stay tuned leave everything to him uh and and he has like he said many times you know i am with you you have a journey with him he's in you he's around you and he takes care of you 24/7 and that's been my experience since 2011 as well i'm going to end i'm going to end this with a small play prayer and there's this beautiful song by Celine Dion which i think perfectly articulates and perfectly expresses the feelings that i would have for swami at this point uh, that my feeling so swami and swami's love for us and which i think every student and every devotee would have is where veselin dion says i am everything i am because you loved me i think that is the starting point is the love of god for all the times you stood by me for all the truth that you made me see for all the joy you brought to my life for all the wrong that you made right and for me that's a big one there are a lot of wrongs for me for every dream you made me see for all the love i found in you i'll be forever thankful sai you're the one who held me up never let me fall you're the one who saw me through it all 
you gave me wings and made me fly you touched my hand and i touched the sky you stood by me and i stood tall i have your love i had it all i'm grateful for each day you gave me maybe i know i don't know that much but i know this much is true i was blessed because i was loved by you sai ram